about different types of witnesses and uh, various things of that nature. So this week we're going to uh, bring some conclusion to it. I kind of got some additional insights that God has breathed to us. And so we're going to look at some scripture, get a real good base, and then uh, try to wrap this thing up tonight by the glory and the honor of God. So let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 32. Kind of gave you a little bit last week uh, in the conclusion out of Genesis 31 about Jacob and Laban, uh, even with the stones, and how the stones bore witness to the covenant. Mm. So tonight, I want to kind of give us some information uh, that is pertinent to a witness, uh, information that is pertinent to a witness. Uh, so getting some history of the word as it relates to Genesis chapter 32. All right, Genesis chapter 32. Look at verses 24 through 32. Now this is a familiar passage of scripture, uh, potentially, uh, for those that, that may have been in vacation Bible school as a child, uh, talking about Jacob wrestling with the angel. Mm. Uh, some very, very familiar scriptures. We can get some wisdom out of it tonight uh, relative to even how this pertains to us being a witness. All right, Genesis chapter 32. We start at verse number 24 and read it through the end of the chapter, which is only verse 32, so we get some understanding tonight. All right, Genesis chapter 32, verse number 24. The word of the Lord reads this, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Verse 26, and he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. He said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall no more be called Jacob, mm -hmm. but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore? Is it that thou dost ask after my name? <laughs> and he blessed him then. Verse 30, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted or limped upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day. Because the angel, he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the side new that shrank. All right, let's get some let's get some understanding here, Brother Foster, as to why or how this relates to us being a witness. When we look at the history, the Ariana of Jacob and his life, Jacob, this is just good food for thought, good information to know. Uh, nah. Let me see if you know. What does, if anybody knows, if we don't know, it's cool, we're going to learn tonight. What does the name Jacob mean? Does anybody know one of the meanings behind the name Jacob? It means supplanter. It means supplanter. Yes, thank you for the Bible reference. Uh, it means supplanter. Yes, All right? Supplanter. Jacob also means to be a deceiver. It also means to be a liar. Mm -hmm. So Jacob, we got three good words that we'll remove for the rest of our lives. Jacob means to be a supplanter, mm -hmm. a liar, and a deceiver. All right? Jacob, his name, Deacon, is about carry a connotation that before he showed up, people already knew who he was. Wow. Uh, before he showed up, before he said anything, when they heard his name was Jacob, they know whatever's going to come out of your mouth is a lie. Mm. Now, that scares us the caution because uh, sometimes, uh, even though our names aren't Jacob, I, I, I think I'll stop. It's almost uh, heavy. People right. already know. It's heavy already. That what you get ready to say yeah. is a lie. Wow. So Jacob, the supplanter, had not only uh, been on the run from his brother Esau, he was scared for his life. He had also been taken advantage of, Sister Arya, by his uncle Laban uh, as it relates to uh, kind of how Laban cheated him out of his wife. Uh, he gave him uh, the older daughter, Leah, instead of giving him Rachel, who he really wanted. So he ended up working what ended up being 20 years wow. to get the woman that he wanted. 
During that 20 years, the scripture says that Jacob's wages from Laban had been changed 10 times. Uh, he was just taking advantage of He was running muck, Mr. Black. Uh, Jacob uh, had a number done on him. But the number was done on him because that was his character. Wow. Because he was a liar, people had to lie to him. Mm. I, I want us to catch this. So, so if being a liar is identified with me, I might as well expect folks to lie to me because they expect to hear a lie from me. Wow. Let's, let's change the verb. Uh, even, or the adjective, whatever it is, I'm a part of speak, might be off. But uh, if we take out the word liar and say that uh, you're janky, that's Pastor Hint's word. Uh, so if you're janky, you might well expect folk to be janky to you. Wow. Whatever it is that you are, Whatever it is that you're perceived to be is how it is people will deal with you. Mm. So you wonder, well, why people got attitude with me all the time? Because their perception of you is you've got an attitude problem. Wow. So Jacob had really been taken advantage of. For 20 years, he'd been on the run. Uh, he decided, I don't want to run no more. So as he's preparing in Genesis 32, and I didn't read the first few verses, so you're going to give you a recap. He's preparing to meet his brother Esau. Mm -hmm. uh, he's preparing to reconnect with Esau. Uh, so first lady, what he does is he understands uh, Tony Jr. that, you know, God has blessed him over these 20 years. Uh, but he's still not too sure how Esau is going to respond to him. Mm -hmm. So he said, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to take uh, Leah, who is the one I really don't love, uh, but she's also my wife. Uh, I'm going to take Leah. Your kids, your cattle, your everything. And I'm going to send you first. And I'm going to let you and your crew go. And uh, when Esau meet you, if he don't kill you, I'm good. then I know I'm straight. <laughs> <laughs> but if he kill you, I'm still good because I got the one I really love still with me. Okay. So, 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 so he has sent Tony Jr. Uh, somewhat of an envoy in front of him. He's still operating as a supplanter because Leah had no, uh, you know, it was no conflict between Leah and Esau. The conflict was between Jacob and Esau. Mm -hmm. But because Jacob still is having been delivered from being a liar and a supplanter and a trickster, he said, I'm going to still operate the way I know to operate because this is going to preserve my life. So he said, I'm going to send them. Then he told Rachel, I want y'all to get ready because uh, even though I love you, you're still going to go ahead of me too. Uh, I'm going to send Lee and they, they'll be the first, you know, if they, they get got, okay, we're good. But I'm going to send you ahead and I'm going to be the last person to come because, uh, you, know, you know, if I die, all the inheritance is gone. Jacob was all over the place. So um, he sends everybody away. And that's what the scripture picked up in the 24th verse that we read out of Genesis 32. It said at this point, Jacob was left alone. Now, Jacob, uh, the liar, the supplanter, the deceiver, uh, even though he's alone, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord, the angel, came and appeared to him. And when the angel appeared to him, uh, Jacob decided, I'm tired, D, of being how I am. Mm. I feel like I got an opportunity now to have a change happen in my life. So being that I've got this visitation from God, I'm not going to let this opportunity pass without me getting a blessing. Wow. So he's wrestling with this angel. And the Bible says they're wrestling all night long. Days beginning, getting ready to break. The angel said, listen, man, you got to let me go. I got to get out of here for real. I was just coming, you know, to, to try to be a blessing to you anyway. But uh, you, you holding me too long. I got to get out of here. So Jacob said, I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. So the angel says, um, the blessing I can give you, because you already got money, you know, you're good on that and all that. The blessing that I want to give you is a change in your character. He says, what is your name? He says, my name is a liar. My name is a deceiver. My name is a supplanter. So the angel says, your blessing or your reward is that you will no longer be called by a liar, a deceiver, a awesome. supplanter. Yes, sir. I'm going to call you Israel. And as Israel, you're going to be known as a prince with God. Now, when I looked and did some research on the word witness, I gave you, I gave you all the English definitions last week, and I'm going to give you some Hebrew and some Greek today. The first one I'm going to give you is a Hebrew definition for the word witness, and that word is aid. 
It's actually uh, E D. That's it. That's how you spell it. E D. Aid. Aid. He's got a little TP over it and a little like comma uh, apostrophe, if you will, in front of it. So aid is a Hebrew word which means witness. It means testimony. It means a recorder, one that writes things down. And finally, it means a prince. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> a witness, testimony, a recorder, prince. So we identify, Minister Black, that whenever it is we see the word Israel in the Bible, we can always substitute Israel for the word witness. We can substitute Israel for the word prince. We can substitute Israel for the word testimony. We can substitute Israel for the word record. So Israel, in fact, means to be a witness. Now, ah, uh, okay. Israel, the church of Israel, were God's chosen people. These are the people that the Lord blessed and say, you know what, you're going to take my name, the inheritance is going to be given to you, Israel. All right? In exchange for you carrying my name, there's an obligation now for you to be a witness. That whenever you go into these lands wherein you go, when you come in contact with foreign people, your obligation is to simply testify to who I am. Not to be like them, not to give in to their way of living, not to change your standards to meet theirs, but in fact to be a witness to them of who I am. Now, because Israel was God's chosen people, when we identify, Sister Greer, the entire scope of the Old Testament, it is written from a predominantly Israel Jewish perspective. It is written to those that were and still yet are today the Jews. It is in the Old Testament where we identify through books of prophecy, like unto Isaiah, like unto Jeremiah, like unto Ezekiel, where there were prophecies that said because Israel had denied the, the, the will and the right that they were given to be a witness. He says, I'm going to raise up Gentiles, non-Jews, that are going to now be able to be grafted into the same covenant that the Jews had all to themselves. Because Israel didn't fulfill their commitment to be a witness, he said, I'll bring along Gentiles, I'll bring along non-Jews, I'll bring along anybody that's not in the Jewish nation, uh, through, the, uh, through, through the name of my son Jesus, I will bring them in and I will put on them the same blessing that they can carry my name. But in exchange for carrying my name, they're supposed to be a witness. Mm -hmm. So when we identify that we as being Gentiles or non-Jews, this is not a skin color type thing. This is simply a heritage. They're, they're African American non Jews. They're Caucasian non Jews. They're, uh, 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 you know, um, Mexican non Jews. It doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. It spoke of the culture or even of the upbringing. He said, regardless of who you are, I'm going to give you the ability to be grafted in. But in exchange for my name, I'm expecting to hear from heaven what your witness is. So when I'm not witnessing, Brother Foster, when I'm not telling people of uh, or about who I am and whose I am, what I'm really saying is I'm no better than the Israelites that shunned their responsibility to be a witness of who God was. Mm. He says, I'll give you salvation. The only thing I'm asking in exchange is for you to tell somebody about it. Mm -hmm. But Pastor, I don't really talk to people. And that's cool. You can tell them about more than what you say. You can tell them about more than what you say. I'm, 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 I'm going to talk about Brother Foster. This is good. Maybe I'll think of something bad to get him with later. But this, this is a good thing. Uh, young man came. I thought he was going to come now. He still made me run late. Young man came to church on Sunday. And uh, after church, he said, you know, Pastor, I really enjoyed myself. I uh, believe I'm going to come back. Um, uh, try to come check you out on Wednesday night. He said, but when I came, I was looking uh, for this guy. I said, okay. Um, all right. Uh, well, who is the guy? And, you know. You ain't looking for Jesus, you know, I'm, I'm confused. So he said, uh, I can't, I'm looking for this guy because uh, uh, I used to work with him. And he said, you know, he was, he was kind of, you know, like upper management type thing. And 
I knew I was getting ready to be, you know, ready to leave, and so I was kind of reserved about how I wanted to kind of talk to anybody because I knew I was on my way out. He said, but this guy was so approachable. Mm. Uh, he it was just so easy to talk to. And he said, the only thing he kept talking to me about was his church and his pastor. <laughs> and he said, man, I kind of got tired of hearing about the pastor. And I had to ask him, man, who is your pastor? <laughs> And he said, um, he told him who his pastor was, and the guy said, I, I know your pastor. I, I met him before. He said, you know what? I'm coming to church. Uh, I said, well, man, I appreciate you coming. He said, no, I want you to hear what I'm saying. He said, I'm coming to church not even really because I told you I would come. I'm coming to church based on what he said. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I want y'all to catch this. Never did the man tell me, bro, Foster, that you minister to him about Jesus. Yeah, that's good. Just, just catch yeah. where I'm going here. Never did the man say you broke out your Bible and start didacting a scripture. Uh, never did the man say, you know, uh, when he took me and, you know, he fed me, but then we went. He said, just because he told me about the place, I decided I'm going to go. And I'm listening to the guy, and I'm saying, man, this, this is so powerful. This is really preachable, what you're saying. Because the reality is, and I said this last week, People will come check something out just off the strength of your word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you got enough conviction, not just about your pastor and about your church, but you got enough conviction about who Jesus is in your life, people don't even need you to quote a scripture. They don't need you to take them down Romans Road. They don't need you to lay hands and prophesy to them. What they need you to do is simply invite them. Tell them. That's it. He said, I know I told you, Pastor, I was going to come when I met you before, and, you know, I was going to do that. But uh, the reason I'm here is because this man said enough about it that it convinced me. So God is requiring us in our individual walks, Sister Lipscomb, whether we come into contact with a thousand people a day or we come into contact with one person a day. That that person we come in contact with ought to be tired enough about hearing this Jesus that they say, you know what, I just got to try. I got to get a shot. Because, man, listen, I'm really tired of hearing about this, this dude from you. But, Pastor, that's being a holy roller. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's being an effective witness. Yes. So, the name Israel, whenever we see Israel in the Bible, it is to remind us that we, or the Israelites, had a responsibility to simply be a witness. Now, as the story progressed with Jacob, Jacob's name is changed. And this, this is the interesting part right here, uh, First Lady. Even though his name changed, he went back to people that still knew him as Jacob. <laughs> yeah. Even though he's no longer called Jacob, his name is now Israel. He went back to people that the last thing they heard from him was Jacob-like. Mm. You just sent me ahead of you, man, because you wanted me to die in case your brother was still mad. But now you're going to show up telling me your name is no longer Jacob, but call you Israel. Well, where's the fruit of your name? Mm -hmm. Pastor, what you telling me? When it is that I'm going to put Jesus out there, they got to be able to match the Jesus I'm speaking about to the Jesus that they ought to be seeing in me. But if I'm saying it, but I'm still looking like Jacob, mm. they're going to be just as confused as you are. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm saying. When we have a responsibility, Sister Aria, to be a witness for the things of God, we have to learn, Sister Akasha, how to stay in the lane that we know about. Oh, God, that was heavy right there. Uh, if you don't know the seven churches in Asia, don't start talking about the seven churches don't in Asia. Do it, right. <laughs> because you're walking in territory that ain't going to do nothing but leave you and the person confused. Mm -hmm. If all you know is the 23rd Psalm, let that be your witness. Mm -hmm. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Yes, sir. Now, Pastor, he ain't going to make you learn a little more than that. But the reality is, if that's where you are right now, well, I want you to tell everybody the Lord is my shepherd. And just stay right there. Well, what else is he? Uh, he, he lets me walk in paths and he covers me. Yeah. He leaves me beside still yeah, waters. Well, and I give you all that. He me. restores my yes, soul. Sir. Yes, sir. He even leaves me in the path of righteous boy's name. Yes, Whatever it is that I know, that's the lane I'm going to stay in. 
But ain't no need for me to try to think because, you know, I've been to Bible study for two months. Yeah, I can go ahead, yeah, I'm going to break down this for you. Yeah, I'm going to give you the doxology. Relative. You ain't know what you're talking about. So I got no Sister Greer. Whatever it is that I'm going to share, I have to be able to defend what it is I'm going to share. Now, that, that's, that's, that's 201. Uh, that's what you call apologetics. It is the defense of the gospel. Yes, sir. I can defend this thing that I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. So if you, this, this is a good note right here. If you can't defend it, don't share it. <laughs> it's a mile. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you, you can't defend it, don't share. So, I, and, and I said this before, and it, this, you know, we're going to talk about this a little bit on, on Sunday morning as it relates to evangelism when we get to that, that portion in our first principles. Uh, the reality is this whenever you're joining into something, I've said this before and I'll say it again, whenever you're joining into something, it is your responsibility to make sure that you can talk intelligibly, intelligibly about the organization. If I'm a member of Cap Alpha Psi, I ought to be able to talk intelligently about the 10 founders that we have. If I can't talk intelligently about them, I probably need to wear a shirt that says uh, find new power. I probably don't need to do that. I need to just hold off. Because in, in, in some circles, that'll get my shirt snatched. <laughs> <laughs> because if I can't effectively defend the history of what I'm representing, then I'm going to confuse those that may want to join my organization. So if I'm saying I'm a member of the body of Christ, even though Pastor said, I know you spoke another 23rd song, you should, we ought to at least be able to explain the process of salvation. Because how can you be something that you can't explain? Oh, yeah, I'm saved. Well, tell me how we get saved. Uh, well, if you come to my church, my pastor can take care of that for you. Wait a minute. No, throw your pastor in the trash for a minute. The reality is you ought to be able to do what you say you are. So if you're saying you're saved, I ought to at least be able to tell you, man, this is how it happened for me. Even if you don't got the scripture, if you don't got the, you know, all that stuff to go with it, at least look, I can tell you this. You know, one day, man, I was messed up. And uh, I went to church and, you know, the preacher began to talk about, you know, if I wanted to change in my life, I came to the altar. When I came to the altar, man, all I did was I just told God I was sorry. And when I went back to my seat, man, it was like I was a different person. And every day I'm getting better at being a different person. You just explain salvation to somebody. You ain't have to go to no scripture. You ain't have to go with thou shalt confess with thy mouth of the Lord Jesus in the heart of God. You ain't have to go through all that. Just, you know what, this is what my experience was. But if I've never had the experience, mm -hmm. if I've never had the experience, mm -hmm. I can't share because I don't have no point of reference. I can't go around and say, well, I'm saying because I go to church every week. <laughs> the devil go to church every week. Mm. Matter of fact, you bring them with you. Mm. <laughs> okay, right. too, too, too deep for Wednesday night. Okay, so witness. We've got to be a witness. When we identify that name and that word Israel, we have got to be a witness. So uh, first point I'm making tonight, I'll um, give you three different types, not necessarily types, because we talk about those three different Vantage points. That's what I want to use. That's a good word, too. Vantage points. Mm. Three different vantage points of what a witness is. The first thing I want to talk about is my witness. My witness. That, that's point one. My witness. And, and we started with Jacob in Genesis uh, 32, where, in fact, his witness became a change in his name. That when his name was changed, there was there a witness that came with the name. What am I saying? Same thing I said a moment ago. When Jacob went into that instance, he went into that instance as Jacob. He went into that instance as a liar, but he came out changed as a witness for God. The same thing with us. Whenever it was that we were converted, we came to church or we came to the place we were in as a sinner. But when we left out of that place, whether I got saved at home, in church, in the mall, doing uh, evangelism, somebody knocked on my door, uh, at work, wherever it was, I was a sinner when I started, but I left out of that place a saint. Therefore, when I left out, there came with me a responsibility that even as I'm growing, before I start talking, I should at least be showing that there was a change. Pastor, show me that in the text. I will. Thank you for, for asking me, Sister Lesko. Uh, it's in the text that says, even though he came back looking like Jacob, he came back with a limp. Mm. <laughs> yes, Harrison. So, Jacob. Uh, 
Soldier of God. That's great. Yes, he's with us. He's a children, children of God. He's a prince. He's a soldier. All those great things. Yes, sir. Now, he came out with a limp. Now, check this out, Sister Dasha. Now, what the limp said was, even if Talk you can't me. see me Talk being different, me, come on. You can see me being different. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Even if my voice still sounds like the liar I was before I came. Wow. Now, when you see me, I have a noticeable limp. To let you know, yes, I've been in the presence of somebody greater than me. This is good. This is good. So this is what I'm saying right here. We ought to all in some way have a limp. Wow. It ought to be something noticeably different about my character. That's all the limp was. Something noticeably different about my character that says, even though I see you as the same, it's something different about you now that I can't quite put my finger on. Whenever I come into the presence of God and I'm looking to be changed, like Jacob was, this, mm, let, me, let, me, let me just, this, this is a good piece to give you here. Jacob, being as black, was already blessed before he met God. This is good. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not only was he already blessed, he already had an inheritance he was living in before he met God. Pastor, what are you saying? So what I'm saying is being a good person doesn't make you a God person. Mm -hmm. It's folk right now that's, that's living real good. I mean, they're good. They're they real good. You know, they don't have a whole lot of worries. They're they, they straight, you know, doing their thing. Uh, and they're good people. But the reality is that doesn't make them a God person. Mm -hmm. Just because I got inheritance, because I got stuff, because I got things, that doesn't mean that I'm in the will of God. That's right. So Jacob, who came out of the presence of God, saying he was different, and even walking like he was different, was then challenged, check this out, he was then challenged to live out his limp. Mm. He was challenged to live out his limp. Pastor, what do you mean? The very next verse. The Bible shows us that Jacob now has to meet the man Deacon is black. He's been running for him for 20 years. This is a man he's stolen from. This is a man he's tricked. This is a man that really supposed to be was his brother, a man that was his twin. They came out the same time, help us Jesus, uh, sharing the same blood. But this man is what he has to now face to see if he can walk out the evidence behind this limp. And so he now has to approach Jacob, he has to approach Esau from a standpoint that says, I already had a game plan. Now check this out. I already had a game plan as to how this meeting was going to go before I met God. But now since I've been to church, I gave my life to God, and I'm saying I'm new, I have to now delete my game plan and do it God's way. Hmm. Let me help us. Uh, some of us that have been saved for 30 years still got a game plan. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Some of us still got a game plan. I'm going to do it this way. Um, the law says it should be done this way, but I'm going to do it this way because I think this way will make it better for me. Well, God says, uh, you're not walking out your limp. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Walking limp out. yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, uh, God, let me, let, me, let me get a good example. I want a good example, but I don't want to, I don't want to step on nobody's toes. Uh, so, Lord, just give me one. Okay, he's going to give me one while I'm talking. All right. So, 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 so the reality is, uh, oh, okay, here go one. All right. So, 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 so uh, check this out. Now, 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 let's say, let's say, uh, let's say, let's say I got some, uh, let's say I got some issues with my credit. All right. Um, I got some, some known issues with my credit. I'm talking about, I know. Like to the degree that I just got it pulled maybe a day ago. Hmm. So I already know 